Breaking tonight, a stunning development on this primary election night. One of the most powerful Republicans in Washington has just lost his congressional bid to a Tea Party challenger. The news breaking a short time before we came to air, the House Majority Leader, Eric Cantor, has been defeated by somebody whose name you probably had never heard prior to tonight, Dave Bratt, an economics professor. We are waiting for Professor Bratt to speak after winning this primary, and we've got Team Fox coverage with Brett Baer, anchor of Special Report, Chris Dyerwalt, our Fox News digital politics editor, and Britt Hume, our senior, senior political analyst. Um, it's, now we're getting some reaction in uh, as we get the DCCC uh, weighing in on, on the defeat, saying, and I quote, we all saw how far outside the mainstream this Republican Congress was with Eric Cantor at the helm. Now we'll see them run further to the far right with the Tea Party <laughs> striking fear into the heart of every Republican on the ballot. Uh, yeah. And so, okay, so I, you get the flavor. I, I could see you're taking it seriously. And Britt, you know, I can, I can sense your fear. You, I see it by the big smile on your face. <laughs> Megan, that's what you expect the DCCC to say. That's silly. Um, They're responsible for but, getting Democrats elected to Congress. Yeah, that's right. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is what that is. And they, their job is to try to portray the Republicans as, as uh, outside the mainstream, outside, practically almost outside the country. Let me make a point about the level of support. We're looking for ways we can figure out how this guy did this, right? I mean, he didn't have any money. He didn't have any advertising. He David and Goliath. And, and, and you heard uh, Laura saying that the Tea Party organizations that we may have heard of uh, didn't really support him in any way. But who did? Well, Laura did. Mm -hmm. And look, there are parts of this country where if Laura Ingram and Ann Coulter and Mark Levin are on the radio supporting you, that's worth a lot. In fact, if somebody said, would you rather have, you know, the Freedom Works behind you or would you rather have any of those three radio talk show hosts in, in there plugging for you day by day, I think I know what my choice would be. Mm -hmm. I think we may now know something about how this happened. Yeah. The, the those three people in certain, in, in, the, in the right place, with the right constituency, those people hold real power. Yeah, the power That's of talk right. radio, Brett. Yeah, I tell exactly. you, it's, it's the power of talk radio. It's also, you know, we've been focusing almost exclusively on immigration, immigration reform, Dave Bratt using that against Eric Cantor. He also used other issues, like spending. Uh, and he was hitting uh, Eric Cantor on spending and how Congress is out of control, uh, a key Tea Party issue. Now. It, it's also anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. The House Majority Leader is essentially establishment, mm -hmm. and so well, there's been there since 2000. To it. Long time. Uh, and and so if anybody is scared tonight, I think it would be Thad Cochran in Mississippi, who uh, now probably is facing a much more energized Tea Party, who looks at this race and taking down the House Majority Leader, and probably will come out in droves for McDaniel. Uh, his his opponent there. He was already Cochran was already on the ropes, forced to go to a runoff in Mississippi. But I think that this also really infuses this this energy into the Tea Party that perhaps it hadn't seen because of all the losses it had taken so far in the primary season. Mm -hmm. And what we are told now, just so the viewers know, Chris Dyerwalt is that uh, so he. Uh, Mr. Bratt is going to face off with another person no one has ever heard of named Jack Trammell, who is also a professor at uh, the same college, the same school. These, so these, this is actually kind of funny. Like these two college professors are now going to vie against each other for this seat that nobody ever thought either one had any shot at whatsoever. And uh, it was actually my uh, alma mater's rival when I was in school, Randolph Megan College is. So, I like the uh, way kudos. you say it. It sort of sounds like you're saying Randolph Megan. Randolph Megan College. I bet you they would rename it. Uh, they gave Britt a, uh, a honorary degree. They'd probably rename it for you. Well, I think but they're going to have to rename it for Dave Bratt because he's the one who's uh, <laughs> achieved more than anybody coming out of that school this week anyway. So, something I would point out here. So this will change the dynamic in Washington pretty dramatically. Uh, Eric Cantor sounded conciliatory. He sounded uh, resigned he, to his state. He sounded like he was ready to face facts. This will change the dynamic in Washington very much. And what it will likely do is cause President Obama to deliver more quickly on his threat for executive action on immigration, on immigration. with all Absolutely. these kids on the border in in yep. pens oh yeah 
I would think this will expedite things because this is the death knell. This is the end of the discussion about what's going to happen on any kind of immigration, anything in this Congress. It's a dead letter, and it's not coming back because Eric Cantor's defeat has sealed that. The president has been threatening all along that if the Republicans did not give him what he wanted, which he knew they never were going to do, that he was going to carry through on executive action. Okay, but I let would me say ask you this. this. Expedites it. Let me ask you this, because, and I want to get Ann Coulter back on in a second, but I want to ask you this first. Does does, this, does Eric Cantor have some sort of an obligation, an ethical, a moral, a fidelity obligation to the party to step down as majority leader now that he's this lame duck, basically, Chris? No, he, he has an obligation to Will do what Will it hurt the Republican his... Party if he doesn't? He has an obligation to do what his conference wants him to do. They're going to meet. They're going to talk about it. I'm already getting the traffic on this, talking to yeah. people on the Hill. They're going to meet. They're going to talk about it. Speaker Boehner's going to weigh in. And Cantor, who, again, sounds like he is prepared to do, to do what people want him to do at this point. You, you have a loss like this. You don't have a lot of clout. And so it's up yeah. for his fellow members to decide what they want. And that clout, Brett Baer, is important, right? And going into Huge. the midterm elections to fundraise, to be out there, wearing the, you know, being the party standard bearer. Huge. As House Majority Leader, you're trying to herd the cats on key votes. You're not the whip. You're not actually counting the votes, but you have to influence people. The fact that you lose your primary and you essentially don't even have your district backing you up, that is going to be tough to influence Republicans who are going to be skittish on these big votes that will be facing Congress. So I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if he does step down. And that would be a way for him to rehabilitate himself in the party mm -hmm. and possibly save uh, a race yet to come uh, for Eric Cantor. So it's not exactly Kevin Spacey. As in, he was the whip. <laughs> just, but anyway, it's close enough. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm going to stand you guys by, and I'm going to get to Ann uh, in a minute. But we have to take a quick commercial break. Don't go away. Don't miss a thing. We're still waiting on Dave Bratt. What does he have to say to now the nation that's waiting to hear from him?